Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young, Alan Ladd, and William Bendix in China. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. America has been at war for two years. But this war, England has been at war for four. But this war began on the other side of the world. It began with an incident at the Marco Polo Bridge in Taiping more than six years ago. At first, the Japanese octopus pushed its tentacles rapidly into China. Then the advance was slowed. Then it stopped. In these six years, the Chinese have fought with old guns, old airplanes, with knives, with clubs and with their bare hands. But their day will come, and soon, and we will have the privilege of assisting their valor. The Chinese story is too broad, too big for any one drama. But tonight's play gives you part of it, the part seen by three Americans who follow their trail of destiny across that brave land. The play is Paramount's great hit, China. And starring in it, you'll hear the same three players who gave such fine performances in the picture. Loretta Young, Alan Ladd, and William Bendix. Courage oftentimes inspires courage. And China is the drama of what one man was inspired to do by the things he saw in the great democracy of the East. When the picture was released, if you'd been reading a newspaper of the uh, entertainment business, like, like Variety, you'd have seen headlines like China Top Shy or China Smash in Philly. Translated into English, they mean that the picture was a big success in Chicago and Philadelphia. Of course, it was everywhere else, too. That's the kind of drama that the makers of Lux Toilet Soap want to give you in this theater every week. It plays. And that's only proper in the case of a product which might itself rate headlines like Lux Wows L.A. or Soap Stocko in Cincy, provided anybody covered complexion news the way Variety covers the show world. In any event... You say the same thing every time you buy Lux Toilet Soap. And here's the curtain for Act One of China, starring Alan Ladd as Mr. Jones, Loretta Young as Carolyn, and William Bendix as Johnny, with Philip Arn as Lin Cho. <laughs> His name was Mr. Jones. He told me his first name once in the few days in China that we knew each other. But when I think of those days, I think of him as Mr. Jones. It doesn't sound very romantic, does it? Sometimes I hardly remember what he looked like. Because in China in 1941, events moved almost too fast for memory. One thing I'll never forget. He had a strange, silent look about him. You knew that Mr. Jones would never be afraid of living. Or of dying. <laughs> Mr. Jones was in the Chinese town of Mei when the Japanese bombers roared over and made a shambles of the small houses at Arrow Street. Women and children and old men were streaming out of Mei in panic. But Mr. Jones was very tired. He had driven his truck all the way from Shanghai three days at the wheel. When the woman who owned the small hotel opened the door to his helper, Johnny Sparrow, Mr. Jones was asleep in spite of the noise. Hello, Johnny. You come looking for him? Yeah. What is he, drunk? No, so tired he fell asleep. Well, this is no place for us. I hate to do it, but I got to get him up. What is that in your arms? A baby. What'd you think it was, Donald Duck? A baby? Well, at first I think it is a bundle, but I where? found it on the street. The mother was killed by one of them bombs. Kid's okay. Here, hold him. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Now, oh, go on. Go on, I want to sleep. Come on, boys, wake up. Hey, Johnny, what's the matter? The house pinched? Look, Mr. Jones, the Japs are bombing the town, killing people, blowing the be daylights out of all creation. If you want to make the coast, let's go. I got the truck outside. It's a good thing that Johnny is saying. Go while there's still a road left to drive on. Yeah, I guess we better. Hey, what's that? This? A oh, baby. Well, since when did you have a baby? Since never. This is a friend of Johnny's. I, uh, I sort of found him. Now, him, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, well, well, holy smokes, Mr. Jones, I don't know yet. All right, come on, John. Let's shove off. Say you want to come? No, I stay here. Things are getting pretty hot. I've been here a long time. I do not leave just because people say it is hot. 
I think I stay. Here, Johnny, the baby. Come here, kiddo. Which one of you is Mr. Jones? Him. Mr. David Jones? Yeah, who are you? I'm Captain Tao Yong Kai, Intelligence Department of the Chinese Sixth Truth Army. Oh, sure. I was told you wanted to see me. Sorry I got tied up. Johnny? Yeah, Mr. Jones. Get the truck ready, will you? And Johnny? Yeah. Get rid of that kid, understand? Yeah, sure. Yeah, who'd you Well, I suppose you want my passport. Here it is. Thank you. Come on, get it over with. I'm in a hurry. Everything is in order. Well, you sound like it breaks your heart. Mr. Jones, I regret you're an American citizen. If you were one of my own people, I would have you shot for aiding the enemy. Are you aware the Chinese people are at war with the Japanese? All right, so you're at war. That's your business. Mine is selling oil. If the Japs want oil, that's my business. The prices they pay, it's good business. Now, are you going to give me some more of that tripe, or is that all? I got places to go. That is all, Mr. Jones. All the trying to forget I ever met you. I won't even have to try. Hey, Johnny, get that truck started. That was how Mr. Jones left Nake in a two-ton truck. The rest of us weren't so lucky. We had left on foot when the Japanese bombers first came. The Chinese students and I struggled along with the rest of the poor refugees in the mud and the rain. By 10 o'clock that night, when the truck caught up with us, we'd only gone a few miles. Scrant, there's a the car approaching. Well, whoever is, he's a fool driving with light. If we could only get a ride. Why don't you not slow up? Go to the canal. Do you want to run everyone down? Get off the road! Everybody, get off the road! Stop! Stop! Serve him right if those refugees took the truck away from him. Miss Griff, why can't we run in that truck? Kenyon, that's a very good idea. Lin Wei, bring the girls along. Oh, the idea of swinging a wheel that way, Johnny. I ought to beat your brains in. They couldn't get out of the way, Mr. Jones. You might have killed somebody. Yeah, now the whole mob is piling down on us. What for? What for? For a ride yet, Johnny, which they won't get. Come on, we'll beat these donkeys off. All right, what do you want? Hey, get back there. Get off that truck. Quick, line up there. All right, Johnny. They won't listen. Slug them. Hey. Hey, they quit. Sure, with your speed and my weight, they'd have a chance. Now you're wrong. We didn't have a chance, Johnny. You there! Turn off those headlights! Hey, who's that? Over there. Joe's standing in the light. Boy, what a target for tonight. Did you hear me? Yeah. Well, turn them off. Why? Because lights can be seen. And with Japanese planes around, to be seen might prove very dangerous. All right, Johnny, turn them off. Better. Not so much. I can't see you so well. You couldn't see very well before. If you hadn't stopped your truck, would have killed some of those people. Well, I should have gotten off the road. I see. Linway? Yes, Miss Grant? Now what? You stay here and wait till I get back. You wait too, Linway. Hey, uh, who's the boss lady? She is a very nice lady. Yeah. I got an idea we're going to wait. Yeah, sure we are. Come on, get back in the truck. Might as well stay out of the wet. No sense wasting gas. <coughs> hey, what's that? I have to have the baby, Mr. Jones. I had it right on the seat. It must have waked up. Come on, fella. Had a boy. I, uh, thought I told you to get rid of that. Have you ever tried to get rid of a baby? Especially a Chinese baby. I tried to, but, well, everybody seems to have plenty of them. You hungry, fella? Yeah, yeah. Hey, um, what are you feeding it? Sugar. I had some in my pocket. Won't hurt him now, will it? Uh, if you don't give him too much. Now, what are you asking me for? <laughs> Tough guy. All right, we can go now. Lin Wei? Yes? Lin Wei, you, you ride the front bumper. Do you see any brown craters or any other trouble? Signal me with your flashlight. Yes, miss. Now, wait a minute. I'm not driving this road in the dark. Now, nobody asked you to. You know, the Chinese have an old proverb. Rather than curse the darkness, use your eyes. All right, Lin Wei? All right. Move over, please. I'll drive. Okay. I'll take a chance. <laughs> You're not taking any chance. I know this road like the back of my hand. I was born in that town back there. Well, oh, the baby. <laughs> Say hello to the lady, Donald. Is that his name? Yeah, that's what I call him, Donald Duck. Oh. <laughs> well, hold on, Donald. We're going for a ride. <laughs> Well, you drive pretty well, for a woman. Thank you. Say, if you got your date book handy, you can put me down with the Joneses. David, Llewellyn, Jones. Now, wait a minute. Uh, on second thought, you better put me down with the A's on the front page. Me too. I'm Johnny Sparrow. I'm glad to know you, Johnny. I'm Carolyn Grant. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me, too. You know, the first thing we're going to do is buy you a drink. Oh? If that had been for you, we'd have lost our truck to those thugs. They weren't thugs. They were just poor, frightened people who were bombed out of their homes. 
What are you heading for? Chengdu. Chengdu? Uh huh. Well, that's a long stretch. Yes, I'm afraid it is. Got relatives in Chengdu? No, no, but there's a university there. That's where most of the students are going from the Bondad areas. I. Well, I think I can be of some help. You see, I'm a teacher. Want me to drive? No, no, not now. A little later, perhaps. They sure make a pretty picture, don't they? Who? Them two asleep, Miss Grant, Donald Duck. Yeah. Want me to drive? No, I'm okay. Well, the way that truck is dragging, you think we had a load? Well, we had. They jammed in there like it was a hayride. Jammed in where? In back. The gang that got on back there, we skidded off the road. What? Stay there. I'll take care of him. Okay, okay. Come on. Pile out of there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why did he stop? Sorry I woke you up. Go on back in front. Why? Because I'm going to throw out some passengers and things might get rough. You mean you intend putting them out here? At night? Night or day right now. There are mountains between here and Shanghai and I've got just enough gas. With a load like this, I'll never make it. You can't be serious. Now, look, will you take my advice and get back in with that baby? I'll take care of my business. It's my business, too, Mr. Jones. Now, what are you talking about? This riffraff? They're not riffraff. They're fine people. I told you I was born in that town back there, and these are all my friends. Now, look, lady, all I got is a two-ton truck, and you can't run that on the milk of human kindness. If I'm going to get to Shanghai, they got to get off. Now, you go on. Get back in the truck. I'm sorry, Mr. Jones, but if you put them off here, I'm staying with them. Well, that's the way you want it. Okay. They still go. All right, come on. Come on, get out of there. All right, don't move. I'll drag you out one by one. Oh. oh. Girls, I didn't know. Canyon. Here, here, let me help you. Are you all right? Yes. You, uh, you know her? She's one of my students. The rest of them in there? Yes, they're all my students. Who put them in there? I did. Hey, what's going on back here? Huh, take a look. There's a dozen more in the truck. Well, not bad. You know, I don't know how you do it, boss. Miss Grant, why didn't you tell me this before? Because I was pretty sure you wouldn't let them ride. Oh, tagged me for a heel right away, didn't you? Well, I wouldn't put it quite as strongly as that. You know, I'd forgotten about how much trouble an American woman can be. Mr. Jones, sir. Now, what do you want? We must proceed with our journey. Please get back in the truck. Now, look here, short pants. If you please, at once. Oh, can you imagine that? Him so young and carrying a gun. Thank you, Linway. Shall we drive on, Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones drove all night. The rain stopped and the road began to wind through hilly country. At dawn, we stopped again. We were in a ravine and a Chinese cart was drawn up broadside, blocking the road completely. Two tall Chinese stood beside the cart, looking at a broken wheel. Hey, you! Get that junkie out of the road. Hey, Lin Wei, tell him to get it off the road or I'll knock it off of the truck. Who is this gentleman, Wei? An American who sells oil. Some of our women are riding in the back. This is not a good road for you to travel. Why not? Ten miles up the road, Japanese troops are advancing from Shanghai. Yeah, how do you know? It is my business to know. There are also enemy patrols behind you. So what? The Japs haven't got anything on me. I'm an American citizen and I got a pass. Come on, you get that bunch of junk off the road and I'll go through. What about these girls? Will they get through on your pass too? That's my headache. I'll think of something. It's too bad for our women that you are not a man king to think of something. Wait a minute. If the Japanese are so close, what do you think we'd better do? 200 feet back. At the entrance of the ravine, there's another road. Yeah, what about it? It goes to the top of a hill. Drive up there and wait. Wait for what? That is our signal. The enemy has just been sighted. I suggest you hurry up. We have a little business with the enemy. We saw it all happen a few minutes later from the hill. A Japanese truck loaded with soldiers came up the road and stopped before the cart just as we had done. Quite calmly, one of the Chinese leaned back, put his hand in the cart. Swung his arm. Then he swung his arm forward and something flashed through the air and landed in among the Japanese soldiers. All finished. Hey, you cleaned those Japs right out. Who are those two guys running the show, you know? Very well indeed. They are my first and second brother. Yeah. A medical student at the university. Where with Miss Grant, I also studied English. For an American, Miss Grant has many unusual qualities. Oh, meaning I don't have, huh? Well, I guess you figured out by now I don't like you very much. Oh, that's perfectly okay, Mr. Jones. I don't like you either. Say, uh, Mr. Jones. Come on, get back in the back of the truck. Yeah, Roll sure, it. but, uh, well, if I ask you something, you won't get mad, will you? No, but if you start asking me, what's going on? you go getting mad again. All right, what is it? Well, it's about Donald Duck. Who? The baby. His grand says that Donald has absolutely got to have milk. Do I look like a guy that's got milk? No, but Tan Ying says... Tan who? Folks... Tan Ying, the girl you dragged out of the truck. Her folks got a farm up the road a piece, and they also got a cow. You know, in China, Mr. Jones, cows don't grow on trees. 
It's on the road? We pass right by it. Okay, we could do with a little stretch. We'll go to the farm. It was pleasant on the farm, so peaceful. We were there only a few hours, but they were quiet, gentle hours. There was a pond, and the girls took a bath. <laughs> what do you think of that, Mr. Jones, calling us fit rat? He is worse than a Japanese soldier. <laughs> it's nothing but a kuchang chunk. <laughs> we gave Donald a bath, too, in a wooden wash tub set on the hard, packed dirt floor of the farmhouse. Penyon, her mother, and I. Such a pretty child. No, no, Donald, you mustn't put the soap in your mouth. Is there something that will make him smile? Oh, a baby duck. Look, Donald. We'll swim in the tub with you. <laughs> oh, Mother, it is so wonderful to be back on the farm with you. Back home. It is a nice visit, Tanyin. I wish I could stay always. Tanyin, you can. Uh, yes. Yes, I know. We are going to Chengdu. <laughs> Why, Donald, you mustn't splash too much. <laughs> such a strong man, child. With a harvest of such sturdy youngsters, China need never be afraid. What a great help he will be on a farm in a few years. Miss Grant, must you take him with you? Oh, what do you mean? Why not leave him here with me, on the farm? Well, do you think it would be safe for him here with the Japanese moving north? No one but wild animals would harm such a small one as this. Well, it would be better for him here than where we are going. A small child should not go on such a trip. Perhaps you're right. What about it, Donald? <laughs> he says yes. We will leave him. And later, out in the small thatched barn, Johnny Sparrow was milking the cow. You do it so easily. Isn't milking difficult? Ah, oh, it's all in a touch. Some folks got it, some folks ain't. Me, I guess I got it. Oh, Cows I've milked that stretch from here to Clemens Falls, Oregon. That's where I live. He never had a complaint yet. I bet they miss me. Well, I don't know about them. Right now, I'm so darn homesick, I can bust out crying. Well, John. Uh, it's just being on this farm, I guess. Got me all of a sudden. What's it like? Your farm, I mean. Well, take this old cow here. Smell of grass early in the morning, fresh cut hay. Pine needles on a hot day. A cool breeze coming up off the lake. Mix them all up with the smell of hot cornbread and bacon frying and coffee. Well, that's my home. Oh, it sounds wonderful. You bet it is. Well, bossy, I guess we got enough milk for Donald for now. Johnny. Johnny, will you do something for me? Sure. I want you to help me persuade Mr. Jones to take us to Chengdu. Well, that's kind of a large order, Miss Grant. Is it? Yeah, besides, I was kind of counting on getting to Shanghai myself. I want to catch a boat home for Christmas. I, oh. I even wrote my mom. Oh, well, never mind. Well, uh, uh, well, Miss Grant... Just a second. Yes, Johnny? About my going home, you don't need to let that bother you. The thing is, Mr. Jones. You don't think he could be talked into it, eh? When that guy makes up his mind, nothing short of beating his brains out will change it. Right now, he's set on Shanghai, and, well, nobody ever beat his brains out yet. There's always the first time, though, John. Yeah, I'm ready to leave. What's on your mind? Mr. Jones, from here, the road runs straight north. Some distance ahead is an old temple if it hasn't been bombed out. And just beyond the temple, the road divides. Now, one way heads east. That's a two-day trip to Shanghai, which is full of Japanese, as you know. The other way is a seven-day trip to Chengdu, where all the girls can carry on their work without any danger from the Japanese or their bombs. Mr. Jones, you're not listening. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure I am. What's a uh, Ku Chang Chung? Where did you hear that? Oh, I was down near the pool shaving. I heard one of the girls mention it. Uh. Yeah, what's so funny? <laughs> A Ku Chang Chung is a very tiny insect with a very big and nasty noise. They call you that? <laughs> now, look, third brother, someday I'm going to run my truck right over you. Mr. Jones, what about Chengdu? I haven't enough gas for Chengdu. Besides, i got an important business in Shanghai. Well, we can get you all the gas you want, can't we, Linway? Oh, yes. And as for your important business in Shanghai, Mr. Jones, well, the girls also have important business in Chengdu. Theirs involves the destiny of China. A bunch of girls like that? Please, Mr. Jones, now let me finish. They're students. They're just a few out of many thousands. But they're being trained for a very special job. To educate millions of Chinese. To teach them how working together they can build a new China. Oh, Mr. Jones, you and I are Americans. Our forefathers fought and died for a new America. And you really ought to stop calling yourself an American if you can't help these people now. They're fighting and dying and struggling for a new China. A free China. Yes, 
It is the Chinese soldiers. They are marching on the road. Hey, who's out in front? Don't I know those two? Yes. It is first brother and second brother. Oh, they brought a lot of help with them this time. Who are they, anyway? The Chinese guerrilla fighters. Nice lyrics. Oh, yes, they're wonderful. Yeah, what do they mean? Just what we were talking about. That's the song of the new China. It means we'll dig ditches, we'll build roads. Blood and sweat we'll freely give for a new China, free and strong. Time for us to get going, too. Which way, Mr. Jones? Shanghai or Chengdu? I'll take you as far as the temple, but I'm going to Shanghai. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Alan Ladd, Loretta Young, and William Bendix in Act Two of China. And now, a little drama in the Brown family. You like it, Jim? Mmm. First, I've got to know what it is. You know perfectly well what it is. It's a hat. And I got it to wear to the families on Thanksgiving. Honestly, dear, is that little scrap of fluff really meant to be a hat? You don't like it. Oh, I was only kidding, honey. It's the dizziest headpiece I ever saw, but I knew it's a winner. Say, anyone with peaches and cream skin like yours was just made to wear a foolish hat. Well, that's the way it is. A smart new hat is nice, but a lovely smooth complexion is nicer. So clever women who want to be admired don't take chances. They never neglect the daily Lux Toilet Soap facials that give skin real beauty care. Lux Soap Active Lather Facials work for the screen stars, and I found they work for me, too. The lather feels wonderful on my skin. It's so rich and creamy. Smooth lots of it on, rinse with warm water, splash with cold, and pat with a soft towel to dry. I never neglect this care. I take these Lux Soap Beauty Facials every day. In just a short time, they've helped my skin to look so much fresher and smoother. <laughs> I know, because people tell me so. Now, that's the very same Lux Toilet Soap facial nine out of ten famous screen stars depend on. They've discovered that this gentle soap is right for their complexion. And screen stars are like women everywhere. Some of them are blondes, some redheads, some brunettes, with varying types of skin. So try Lux Toilet Soap Beauty Facials for your complexion. Ask your dealer for Hollywood Fine White Beauty Soap tomorrow. And if he's temporarily out of stock due to wartime conditions, why, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap is worth waiting for. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. China, starring Loretta Young as Carolyn, Alan Ladd as Mr. Jones, and William Bendix as Johnny. In the truck with the girls in the back and Johnny and I riding in the front seat with him, I disliked Mr. Jones almost as much as Lin Wei and the girls did. He was going to Shanghai, to Shanghai and nothing else mattered. When we got to the temple, we could get off and shift for ourselves. But something happened before we reached the temple. I remember Johnny had been talking about the baby. You uh, figure he'll be all right back there, Miss Grant? Who? Oh, Donald Buck. He sure was a cute kid. <laughs> well, what do you think? Do you think he'll be all right, Johnny? Yeah, I, I hope so. If we'd taken him, I guess we'd have had to take the cow. <laughs> yes, and it would have been pretty crowded back there with all the girls, wouldn't it? Yeah, sure, got a Mr. Little Geezer. <laughs> oh, come on, stop mooning. How much further to the temple? About an hour. You still insist upon... Yep, my mind's made up, Shanghai. I was afraid of that. Why, Jazz? Oh. That's the trouble with you, dames. You're never satisfied. Hey. Hey, you're using lipstick. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, I don't know. You just don't act like the lipstick sort. You know, I knew a girl like you once. Worked in a circus. Used to crack a whip and make lions jump through paper hoops. And you prefer the lipstick sort, right? Well, I don't like jumping through paper hoops. Well, I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. I didn't mean to. All right, then quit cracking that whip. This isn't my war, and as long as America's neutral, I'm neutral, too. So if you're trying to recruit for China, you do it someplace else. Not in my truck. Mr. Jones, I'd like to show you something. Hmm? Here, take a look at this picture. I'll watch the road. Uh, isn't that uh, Shanghai? Yes, that's right. Who's the other guy? My father. They were great friends. They were two of the finest men that ever lived. You know, my father was a young man. He was very much like you. 
same idea. Oh, uh, thanks. He was arrogant, opinionated, and completely wrapped up in himself. Oh. I thought you said he was a great guy. Oh, he was. Afterward. After what? After he left the counselor service. What made him switch from that racket? He found out that the people of China were being exploited. The foreign interests were stealing them blind. Yeah, he must have been in a swell spot to see the shakedown. He quit, huh? Yes, he quit. After he met Chiang Kai-shek. And then he spent the rest of his life working for him. In my way, I'm trying to do the same thing. You say I'm recruiting for China. Well, I guess I am. Well, don't try to recruit me. The Japs have always been good business, and you can't expect me to hate them for that. You know, matter of fact, I got a couple of pretty good friends in Tokyo. Hey, boss, the plane up there diving down on us. Stop the truck. Hey, you're telling me. Probably one of your little friends from Tokyo. He missed the truck, but he'll be back. Come on, stay down, will you? He's circling, starting back this way. Hey, those aren't his machine guns. He's hit. They hit the plane. Up the road. Yeah, but who did it? Come on, we'll go see. Yes, that is correct. We shot it down. Well, you guys really got here in a hurry. You did all right, too. That is most usual. First brother Lin Cho and second brother Lin Yun have twice before done the same thing. Hey, where's the rest of your mob? You only got about 20 here. Guerrilla fighting is in small bands. We split up. Some go other way. We came this way. Sure lucky for us. Mr. Jones, one of the girls was gone. Somebody shot? No, no, it's Tan Yin. She dropped off the truck a long ways back. I just found out about it. She went back to her farm. If it's all right with you, Mr. Jones, I'm going back to get her. You know what? She went home, didn't she? What are you worrying about? Well, the Japanese troops may go there. Now, look, you left the baby there, didn't you? That's different. Tan Yin is a girl and a very young girl. Ah, oh, ten to one, the Japs won't even go that way. Well, that's a risk I won't take, Mr. Jones. I've talked to girls who escaped from Nanchow, and I've also seen some who didn't escape. We've got to go back and get her, that's all. She's right. we better go. Now, wait a minute, you two. You talk as if going back to that farm was like driving down to the corner drugstore, and if you think I'm going to... There's no use you flying off the handle, Mr. Jones. You say it's okay for me to go back, okay. But okay or no okay, I'm going anyway. Come on, get away from that truck. I'll take it easy, boy. Somebody's going to get hurt. You ask for it. Oh. Oh. I told you somebody was going to get hurt. It had to be me. Come on, get up. That clip on the chin was just op- for opening your big mouth. I was going anyway. Me and Miss Grant. We left Johnny Sparrow and the girls with the gorillas. They were going on to the temple. The guerrilla leader had given Mr. Jones an automatic rifle, just in case, he said. It took us quite a while to drive back to the farm. The radiator was dry, and we had to stop once beside the roadside stream for water. The moon was very bright. Say, why are you staring at me like that? Was my slip show? Huh. You know, I was just thinking. That outfit you're wearing is terrible. Oh? All except the hat. The hat does something for you. Thank you. And just where can I get a new outfit? You've never been to New York, have you? No. No, but there's a little shop on um, Fifth Avenue. And they make hand-knit wool dresses that are expensive, but they're awfully good. Now, how do you know? Oh, I read their ads in the magazines, and if I find anything I like, I cut it out and paste it in the book. Then I pretend it's the real thing hanging in my closet, see? Well, how about a coat? You know, a mink. Do you think it'll go with that hat? A mink clear down to your knees? Uh, no, no, not mink. There's something newer. It's called a uh, lynx. A lynx jacket right down to here with great big broad shoulders and beautiful full sleeves. Oh, you'd be crazy about it. Yeah, would it go with that hat? <laughs> we'll get a new hat. Just like that one? All right, just like this one. Hey, wait a minute. I forgot something. Two tickets for a football game, Army and Navy. Oh, yes, and a pint of whiskey for you. Right. Um... Hey, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. For a minute it all sounded so real, it made me feel kind of funny. Come on, let's go. It was dawn when we reached the farm. Mr. Jones turned off the motor and we coasted from the road into the farmyard. It was quiet, too quiet. Because on a farm, by dawn, everyone should have been up and busy. Then we saw why it was too quiet. There were Japanese motorcycles parked outside the door. And when we got to the doorway, there were three crumpled bodies lying where they'd been shot down with their blood staining the ground. Two old people and... And poor little Donald Duck. Kenyon. Come on. 
All right, come on out of there. Please, you English? All right, the three of you. Up against that wall. Is she all right? She's darling, you're all right now. You're all right. Come on, get her out to the truck. Come on. Nobody's going to bother you now. Come along, dear. Oh, please, oh, you... Don't cry, Tanyan. We're coming to the temple now. All right, hold on. We're turning. I'm glad you were with me, Mr. Jones. I'm glad you saw what happened. Because somehow just hearing about those things doesn't mean much, does it? Yeah, it's different seeing it. And I wish everyone in America could have seen it. Everyone like you. So wrapped up in themselves. So smug and secure and self-satisfied. They think this isn't their war. Well, any time these things happen, it's everybody's war. And what's happening here can happen in America, too. Why can't they wake up and see that? I don't know. Here we are, Tanya. Mr. Jones, help me to carry on. How is she, Miss Grant? I don't know. I don't think she wants to live. Miss Grant? Miss Grant? Yes, dear, it's all right. What is that sound? Like little silver bells. It's the wind glass. See it? The evening breeze sets the glass strips tapping against each other. See it? Yes. Mm. Will you read to me, Miss Grant? Yes, Tanya. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Miss Grant? Yes. In that book you're reading, it says if we die, there is another life for us. Is that true? Oh, yes. Yes, that's what our Savior meant when he said if we believe in him, we shall never see death. Oh, you can believe that with all of your heart, Tanya. Finish it. Please. All right. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Tanya. Tanya. Jones, what happened? I heard that Tanya... She's dead, Johnny. Chaps? At the farm? Yeah. Yeah, they killed the old folks and... And, and Donald Duck Day. Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, him too. You know what I was going to do with Donald Duck? I was going to take him back to America with me. I was going to adopt him. He was such a little guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Johnny... I shot three Japs who did it. Blew them to bits against a wall, and I got no more feeling about it than if they were flies. In a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Alan Ladd, Loretta Young, and William Bendix, will bring us Act Three of China. Mothers are wonderful people especially in a situation like this. Hello. No, she's a little late tonight, but I expect her any minute. Is it Bill? You're home on me? Oh, how wonderful. Of course she'll want to see you. Goodness, Martha will be fagged out when she gets home from the plant. Lucky there's plenty of hot water. I'll unwrap a nice new cake of Lux soap. She'll have time for a real beauty bath. A very fine planner, Mar Martha's mother. She knows there's nothing like a luxurious Lux toilet soap bath for a quick pickup after a hard day's work. The generous creamy lather carries away dust and dirt in a twinkling. When Martha steps from a beauty bath, she'll be refreshed. Her skin will feel exquisitely smooth and soft. And later in the evening... It's wonderful dancing with you again, Martha. You're just about the sweetest thing I've ever known. Next time you're all tired out, and have a date to keep, relax for a few moments in a fragrant, delightful Lux soap bath. It makes you sure of daintiness, sure of skin that's fresh, really sweet. 
Lovely screen stars say they love the delicate perfume Lux Toilet Soap has. A flower-like fragrance that clings lightly to the skin. Why not let this satin smooth white soap make your daily bath a real luxury? And an expensive one, too. For thrifty Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled. That means each cake can be used down to the last thin sliver. These days, when it's patriotic not to waste soap, that's important. And here's another little tip to save your Lux Toilet Soap. Moisten the leftover piece and press it onto your new cake. And always put your beauty soap in a soap dish that's dry. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Our stars will be your guests for an informal chat after the play. But now the third act of China, starring Loretta Young as Carolyn, Alan Ladd as Mr. Jones, and William Bendix as Johnny. We buried Tanyin near the temple, with the voices of the Chinese gorillas covering the sound of the earth as it fell on the crude wooden coffin that we'd made for her. That night, Lin Cho stopped Mr. Jones beside the truck. Mr. Jones, may I speak with you a moment? Look, I'm in a hurry. I got three Jap machine guns off those rats at the farm. I got them in the truck, and I'm going to start using them. You've changed. The Japanese are no longer your friends, eh? Yeah, what about it? The guy can just take so much easy, 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 Mr. Jones. In fighting the Japanese, most of all, I have learned patience. Maybe you have, but I haven't. If you want to fight, listen. I have learned there's a full Japanese division advancing along this road. I have orders that they must be stopped. Yeah, who's going to stop them? We must. Oh, that's fine. 30 against a full Jap division. Well, that ought to be a cinch. They will pass along a deep, narrow ravine. If they get through that ravine, they will be able to attack the flank of the 5th Chinese Root Army. Hey, a ravine, huh? Well, uh, can't you block the road, maybe, with, with dynamite? Yes. But we have no dynamite. Oh, but there is a repair party of 50 Japanese working at a bridge not far from here. They have plenty of dynamite. 50 to our 30, huh? Well, come on. What are we waiting for? Let's go take it away from them. Fifty well-armed Japanese against Mr. Jones and Johnny Sparrow and 30 Chinese. There they are, Lynchon. It's not going to be easy. No. But our need for the explosive is greater than theirs. Ready? Ready. 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 They came back with the dynamite, but out of the 30 which had gone out, only five returned. Mr. Jones, where are all the others? They're gone. Dead. Oh. Let me carry him, Johnny. Your hands hurt. No. Please, do not move me. It is no use. In way. Oh, in way you are wounded. Mr. Jones? Yeah? I'm right here, Linway. I, I want to thank you for bringing me back here. This is a better place to die. He covered the dynamite with his body. The jab machine guns didn't do him any good. We saved the dynamite. Yes? You saved it. Mr. Jones, uh, I am sorry I did not like you before. I like you now very much. Goodbye, fourth brother. Goodbye, third brother. <laughs> Well, there you are, Johnny. Your hand's bandaged, but you won't drive the truck for a while. Oh, I can drive that truck with my toes. <laughs> uh, Miss Grant. Yes? Yeah. Miss Grant, I don't know about you, but... Well, whenever I get something on my mind, I'm always one for cracking right out with it. Oh, you're right, Johnny. If anybody has anything on his mind, there's nothing better than cracking right out with it. I've been that way ever since one night back home I went on a hayride. There was quite a bunch of us on that hayride... Including a blonde named Mary Lou. Oh. Kind of on the heavy side, but good looking. I'm sure she was. <laughs> well, what with the hay and the moon, a guy named Clem Pickens playing a ukulele. I got the feeling pretty good about Mary Lou. I guess you know how it is. Huh? Well, I've never been on a hayride, Johnny, but well, I can imagine that a ukulele, a blonde, a full moon, and some hay would be, well, sort of like playing with matches. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> well, 
Anyway, after a while, I got the notion that I was crazy enough about Mary Lou to ask her to marry me. I guess you can understand how I felt, huh? Well, if it had been me, I'd have started running down the road for a preacher right then. What? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I should have done. I should never waited till after the weenie bake. Because after the weenie bake, when I got around to asking Mary Lou to marry me... She'd she... promised to marry somebody else. Yeah. And I'll bet you anything it was that ukulele player. Well, how did you know? Oh, Johnny, women just know things like that. Yeah. Well, it sure taught me a lesson, all right. It taught me that if ever I got crazy about a girl again, the thing to do is to come right out and tell her. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm telling you now I'm... I'm crazy about you. Oh, Johnny... Johnny, you're awfully sweet. I... Well, is it okay, then? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm afraid it isn't. Oh. <laughs> I was sort of afraid of that myself. <laughs> but if you should ever change your mind, a letter to Klamath Falls, Oregon, it always reach me. <laughs> well, if I ever do change my mind, Johnny, I certainly will let you know. Well, how's your hand, Johnny? Oh, okay. The only thing that worries me is how am I going to watch my watch? <laughs> well, I'll see you later. That's right. Are you busy? No, no, not very. I've got to go with the truck and get the dynamite ready. Well, Mr. Jones, what did I happen to the man who was in the oil business? Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Will you, will you come with short handed? I can use some help. Yes, of course I'll come. Oh, I see. You tie several sticks of the dynamite in a bundle and then you attach a fuse, huh? Yeah, give me four more of those sticks. Say, you are. Say, it's like this. Oh. Then we dig holes in the side of the ravine and put these in them. Uh -huh. Then we hook them up on a wire to this box with a plunge on it. And when you press the plunger? Yes, sir, that does it. I see. That kicks it off and more dirt rolls on, down on Hirohita's men than they can dig out of in a week. A regular avalanche. Hey, you know, I ought to wrap these things up as Christmas gifts. Christmas isn't very far off, is it? Less than uh, three weeks. Who's going to set off the dynamite? Well, there's only five of us and Johnny Sparrow's a bad hand. Guess we'll all have to go. You'll need me. Now, look, you stay here with a girl. But you'll need me. Johnny can't drive the truck with his wounded hand, and the Chinese can't drive it. You're the only one, and if you're busy with... We'll talk about it later. When do we leave? Just before sunup. We, uh, we haven't got much time, have we? No. Thanks by time, Mr. Jones. Our whole lives could be lived as... as beautifully in five minutes as though it had lasted a hundred years. And sometimes a whole lifetime goes by without... Without a single moment of happiness. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Sometimes time stretches like a rubber band. Earlier this evening, while we waited for you to come back with this dynamite, that's how it was. The waiting was endless. Want me to tell you something? What? Down there tonight, all I could think of was you. When things got hot, I... Well, I made sort of a vow. Just like some men who swear they'll burn a candle before the strain of their patron saint. You, uh, want to know what that vow was? Yes, I do. Well, I swore that if I got out alive, I'd, I'd come back to you and tell you that I, I love you. And I love you, too. Oh, Mr. Jones, why don't you put down that dynamite and kiss me? feel like to feel a little drunk. Wonderful. Then I think I'm a little drunk. Hmm, good. Do you know that you have a little lump on your nose? I can feel it. Mm-hmm. It was broken. Oh, how did it happen? Oh, it's a sordid story. Tell me. Mm-hmm. -mm. You're too young. Oh, please, please tell me. Well, well, it involved another young lady. Oh, was she pretty? No, oh, boy, she was sensational. No. She had a twin sister, too. Were you in love with her? Yep, I was crazy about both of them. <laughs> well, that must have been a little confusing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. The only way I could tell them apart was one drank scotch and the other drank beer. Oh. One night I took one of them out and we stopped for a drink and, well, that's how I got my wires crossed. Oh. Well, without thinking, I ordered beer and when it came, she threw it in my face. Oh, but how could that break your nose? Well, she forgot to take it out of the bottle. <laughs> I think you're just making this whole thing up anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's an operation for adenoids. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Can't you hear it? Yeah, sure. What about it? Well, it started again. 
That means there's a breeze. The morning breeze, the one that comes just... just before dawn. In a few minutes later, we started out. The girls stayed in the temple. There, of course, was an argument about my going, but Lin Cho agreed that I could be of some help driving the truck. It was sunrise by the time we reached our destination, a high, rocky plateau overlooking the main road on which the Japanese would soon be coming. As we walked along the edge, carrying the dynamite and the crowbar to use to plant it on the rock, I could look down on the road below us. The ravine was a thousand feet deep, as if it had been slashed by a titanic knife. Sheer stone walls standing on end, enough to bury an enemy. We stop here. This spot is good. Yeah, this is okay. You need a lookout to watch for the enemy. Well, I guess that's me. Can't do much digging with this hand, huh? Here's a pair of binoculars. One's the property of a Japanese officer. Well, I don't know why I need those. With Japs, you can smell them coming. I'll sing out. All right, let's get busy. We can plant the first bundle of dynamite right here. Bad news. Take a look through these glasses. What is it, Lin Chow? It is the enemy. So soon? Yes. Sooner than we had planned. Here, let me see. Oh, mechanized. Trucks and tanks. They'll be in the ravine and through before we have time to plant the rest of the charges. Yes. It will take us another 20 minutes, and we need all the dynamite to send enough rock down. 20 minutes? How long before the They'll be here in 10 minutes, perhaps 15. Let's get down to that road in five. What do you mean? Who's got a watch? I have. Good, so have I. I'm going down and stall those Japs. Jones, are you crazy? Oh, you can't do that. Oh, stop it, will you? Somebody's got to try. They won't stop for our Chinese. Maybe they will for me. But there's one thing, Lin Cho. In 20 minutes, you've got to set off that blast. And there can't be any ifs or buts. But what can one man do with all those... Don't worry, I'll think of something. Go on, get busy with those crowbars. Callan. Callan, turn this way. I want to see your face in the sunrise. Oh, but look. The day ever comes when it should never rise for both of us again, I... I want you to know that I'll always love you. Yeah. That goes for me, too. Well, cross your fingers. I will. I will. Hold on, Mr. Jones. We saw him on the road five minutes later. I think he waved up to us, but he was so far away it was hard to be sure. When the head of the Japanese column came around the bend, he was standing in the center of the road. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, General. Uh, good morning, General. You speak English? Hold on. Nigga, no, No. Let him approach. Well, thanks, General. All Japanese officers speak English. I stop because I am curious about you. Why have you presumed to halt us? Oh, I'm out of gas. Got a truck a couple of miles down the road. Oh. Uh, do you, by any fortunate chance, uh, happen to have American cigarettes? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, sure, sure. I'm an American. Yes, I thought you were. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, I thought you were American. I spent many years in your country, mm. and I'm familiar with your accent. Excellent cigarette. Oh, here, here, here. Come on, take the whole pack. Oh, I would not dream of depriving you of a treasure so hard to come by. Now, look, you'll be doing me a favor. In that case, very well. Thousand the fun. How do you like America, General? Very much, sir. So much, in fact, uh, that we have decided to take it away from you. Huh? I don't get it. Do you happen to know the date? Date? Yeah. Today is, uh, what is December the 10th, isn't it? Yes. Three days ago, on December 7th, Japan made surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Attack? You mean war? You, uh, <laughs> had not heard? I don't believe it. It is the truth. At this moment... Your battleships are at bottom of Pearl Harbor. Your planes were destroyed on the ground. The city of Honolulu is in the ruins. Within another year, your entire country will be surrendered to the imperial Japanese government. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right about Pearl Harbor. Come to think of it, it's your kind of trick. But you're wrong about the rest of it. Oh, indeed? Yeah. General, in all the countries that you and your gang have put the finger on, there are millions and millions of little guys just like me. Little guys who never amounted to much, but all of us living our lives under, well, pretty much the same pattern. The pattern of our life is freedom. 
And it's in our blood, giving us the kind of courage that you and your gang never dreamed of. And in the end, it's that pattern of freedom that's going to make guys like you wish you'd never been born. Just a moment. Why do you keep looking at your watch? Why do you think? To see what time it is. But I don't have to look anymore, General. Time's up right now for both of us. When the dust settled, the road had disappeared under a mass of broken rock. The avalanche had buried them all. The last I saw through the binoculars of... of Mr. Jones, he had lifted his arm and flipped his cigarette into the general's face. I only knew him for those few days, and now he's gone. But I see him everywhere. I'll always see him. I'll see him marching along with the Chinese guerrillas as they sing their songs, marching with all the people who fight for freedom because he wasn't afraid of dying. To me, to me, he'll never die. That applause is for the valor of China and the sincere performances of Loretta Young, Alan Ladd, and William Bendix. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Like all Americans, I have a great admiration for people who refuse to give up. It was a privilege for me to have a part in China. Chinese think Loretta's okay, too. <laughs> yeah, so much so that Madame Chiang Kai-shek sent her a decoration for her activities on behalf of the United China Relief. I heard about that. What is the decoration, Loretta? Well, it has a beautiful name. It's the Order of the Plum Blossom. Yeah, you must be very proud of that. Yes, Alan, I am. I, I talked to Madame Chiang Kai-shek at a reception here in Hollywood, and I've wondered ever since about the secret of her power and charm. And I believe it's her complete sincerity. Well, meeting her was a very thrilling experience for all of us, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Alan, I hear you and the letter are going to make another picture together at Parma. That's right, Billy. How's it feel to be back in civilian clothes? Uh, it kind of feels strange, Bill. But I miss the khaki and I miss a lot of wonderful guys. Now, your last performance before you went in the service was here, Alan. <laughs> Naturally, we wanted to be the first to present you again. What is the picture you and Loretta are making? It's Rachel Field's story in Now Tomorrow. Yeah, we expect great things from the young lad combination. Now, who knows, Alan? We may be another Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> well, I'll give you a tip. One of you is going to have to put on some weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bill, I, uh, I have a tip for the women in our audience. It's very simple. If they'd like to know a very good way to keep their complexion smooth and just right, it's, of course, like soap. I've used it for a long time. Now, the Chinese say one picture is worth a thousand words. You're worth a good many thousand in sprays of Lux Toilet Soap, Loretta. Now, I have a tip on next week's play. It's one of the screen's current dramatic hits. The RKO picture, The Iron Major. And our stars will be Pat O'Brien and Ruth Warwick. The Iron Major is the story of Major Frank Cavanaugh hero of the First World War, and famous football coach of Boston College and Fordham. And next Monday night, we'll bring you the original stars of the picture, Pat O'Brien as the Iron Major. Well, that's a great way to top off the football season, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good, night. good play is in good hands tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. And the Lux Radio Theater presents Pat O'Brien and Ruth Warwick in The Iron Major. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. The picture China was based on an original story by Archibald Forbes. William Bendix will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture Lifeboat. Philip Ahn will soon be seen in Cecil B. DeMille's Technicolor production of the story of Dr. Wassell. It's been a real thrill hearing Loretta Young on our program tonight. So how about another visit with her tomorrow evening on the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show? Yes, charming Loretta Young is going to have her hands full of critical situations when she enters a laughable, lovable Burns household. Check her newspaper for the time and station tomorrow night. Heard in tonight's play were Barbara Jean Wong as Tan Ying, Tom Lane Jr. as Lin Wei, and Helga Murray, Fred Mackay, B. Benaderet, Charlie Lung, Trudy Marson, Marjorie Davies, Leon Ledoux, Charles Seal, Stanley Farrar, 